West Asia, or what some call the Middle East, is in flux. What started as a direct military confrontation between Israel and Hamas has now snowballed into a regional security crisis. Hello everyone. Welcome to The Hindu. This is Stanley Johnny, The Hindu's International Affairs Editor. Hezbollah, Khatib Hezbollah, Hashad al-Shabi, Houthis, Iran, Pakistan, the United States and the United Kingdom are all now part of an expanding vortex. As Israel's war on Gaza, which has killed more than 25,000 people in just over 100 days, is continuing with no foreseeable end. The related security crisis in the region is deepening as well as widening. Just three months ago, US National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said, the Middle East today is quieter than it was 20 years ago. But today, it is falling into anarchy. How did we reach here? When Israel launched its war on Gaza after Hamas's October 7 cross-border attack, there were fears that the conflict could spill over beyond Palestine. Hezbollah, the Lebanese Shia group that's backed by Iran, fired rockets at Israeli forces in solidarity with the Palestinians. Ever since, Hezbollah and Israel have exchanged fire many times, while Arab countries, upset with Israel's indiscriminate bombing, stuck to the path of diplomacy to turn up pressure on the Jewish state, Iran-backed militias elsewhere opened new friends. Houthis, the Shia militias of Yemen, started attacking commercial vessels in the Red Sea from mid-November, again in solidarity with the Palestinians. Houthis, who control much of Yemen, including its Red Sea coast, has used sea denial tactics to target dozens of ships ever since, forcing several shipping giants to suspend operations in the Red Sea. When Houthi attack imperiled the Red Sea traffic, the United States, which continues to support Israel's war on Gaza, started carrying out airstrikes in Yemen, targeting Houthi position. Hashad al-Shabi, the Shia mobilization forces of Iraq and Syria, who are also backed by Iran, launched more than 100 attacks against US troops deployed in those two countries. In retaliation, the US carried out attacks in Syria and killed a commander of Hashad al-Shabi in a hit in Baghdad. Israel has also carried out multiple strikes inside Syria and Lebanon, killing Hamas, Hezbollah, and Iranian commanders. As instability spread, the Islamic State terror group attacked a memorial event for Qasem Soleimani, the Iranian general assassinated by the United States in January 2020 in Karman, southeastern Iran. As it was coming under growing regional and domestic pressure, Iran carried out strikes on January 16 in Iraq's Kurdistan, Syria, and Pakistan, claiming to have hit a Mossad operational center and Sunni Islamist militants. You can see that there are multiple players in this crisis. But if you take a closer look, there are three major operational centers. Who are they? Of course, Israel, and then Iran, and the United States. Israel is the main driver of this conflict, given its ongoing war on Gaza. It faced military resistance from non-state actors. And if you look at the non-state actors, be it Hamas, the Islamic Jihad, Hezbollah, Houthis, or the Shia militias of Iraq and Syria, what is, what is the common factor? Iran backs them all. And then the United States, which has widespread military presence in West Asia. It has three objectives, to ensure the security of Israel, the security of America's troops and assets deployed in the region, and the preservance of the US-led order in West Asia. Now, take a step back and take a wider look. This is an unstable situation. West Asia has seen conflicts in the past between nation states, for example, the 1980-88 Iran-Iraq war, or the different wars between Israel and Arab countries. And there were conflicts between states and non-state ac actors. For example, you can look at the wars between Israel and Hezbollah and Israel and Hamas. But currently, what you are witnessing is that a widespread security crisis involving 
both powerful states such as Israel and the United States and non-state actors such as Hezbollah, Hamas and the Houthis. In the past, the United States has retained a domineering presence in West Asia, shaping the region's geopolitical outcomes. And America's rivals, including Iran, were wary of breaching certain red lines. This was the backbone of the US-led order in the region. But the current crisis suggests that the old order is in tatters. Iran-backed proxies are directly attacking both Israeli and American positions, while Iran is also flexing its military muzzle through cross-border attacks. The Houthis have challenged the United States' ability to provide security to one of the world's busiest shipping routes, which is the Red Sea, which connects the Mediterranean Sea in the north and the Arabian Sea and the Indian Ocean in the south. Arab countries remain America's allies, but are increasingly frustrated with Washington's unconditional support for Israel's war on Gaza. And the United States, despite its support for Israel, seems either unable or unwilling to push Israel to end this disastrous war and bring back some stability to West Asia. There is no clear way out from this polycentric crisis. After more than 100 days of war, Israel has achieved very little in Gaza given the lofty targets it set for itself. As long as the war continues, Hezbollah and Houthis will continue their attacks. It is to be seen whether the United States airstrikes on Houthis, who survived Saudi bombing for seven years, would have any real deterring effect other than symbolic values. If instability spreads further, the Islamic State and other jihadists would seek to exploit the situation. Iraq and Syria remain vulnerable to internal and external challenges. Iran has sought to project force, but Pakistan's response has underscored Iran's limitations. The United States, once a shaper of outcomes in West Asia, watches the region plunge into chaos. The only silver lining amid this spiral of crisis, as of now, is that the Saudi-Iran Duton and the associated Saudi Houthi peace is holding in an otherwise instability struck West Asia. For more such video explainers and analysis, please subscribe to The Hindu.